Welcome to The Prescription, the Tax Policy Center's bi-weekly webcast on fiscal policy. This is one of a series of conversations with state, local, and federal government officials, as well as leading economists and other experts. I'm your host, Howard Gleckman, a senior fellow at TPC and editor of our blog, TaxVox. My guest today is Omri Marian, professor of law at the University of California, Irvine. Before joining UC Irvine, he was an assistant law professor at the University of Florida. He has his law degrees from the University of Michigan. Professor Marian has a special interest in international tax and taxation of cryptocurrencies. But today we'll be talking about his proposal for a data tax, which he described in a 2021 paper, uh, 2021 paper called succinctly enough, Taxing Data. A link to his paper uh, is in the chat. Uh, before we begin, our usual bit of housekeeping. We encourage audience members to submit questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. The event is being recorded and will be posted on TPC's website in the near future. We're using captioning, which you can adjust or turn off with the live transcript button at the bottom of the Zoom screen. If you'd like to join the conversation on social media, please use the hashtag live at urban. And if you'd like to suggest a future guest for the prescription, just email us at info at taxpolicycenter.org. Uh, Omri Marian, welcome to the prescription. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's good to see you and uh, good to have a conversation about a very interesting paper. So in that paper, you describe the flaws in the current corporate income tax and suggest that technology basically is outrunning an income tax model. Uh, in brief, you write, uh, the data economy fundamentally changes the role of source, ownership, and monetary value. Uh, in data-rich mar markets, it's not even clear that these concepts are theoretically meaningful. Uh, and it's not clear that they assist in any meaningful way to identify one's ability to pay. So before we start talking about your proposal, let's unpack your concerns. How does the data economy change the role of source ownership and monetary value? Um, so um, income tax, uh, the, the, the system that we're currently using is based on these three ideas. Uh, historically, it made sense uh, to base a tax on uh, uh, monetary value, source and residence uh, in economies we were that were relatively localized, we were able to identify who owns what and what is the value of whatever uh, it is owned and who makes what income. Uh, obviously, this is not the economy that we're living in. And over the past, I don't know, two or three decades, the OECD was has been working on trying to fix this. Not only the OECD, many other uh, uh, many others as well, by effectively trying to force us still into the into this concept that was created over a hundred years ago. Uh, um, in, in an economy that is uh, very much uh, digitalized. Um, the thing is that I think one of, one of the problems with this is that uh, this idea um, is uh, to try to force um, digital economy into the concept of income tax, assume that this is still the best tax base. It, it, it assumes that we're uh, basically in the same position as we used to be, except that the transactions are digital. Um, and I think that this is not exactly where we're at. It's not that the transactions are just being manifested or executed uh, in electronic ways. Um, electric, uh, electrons, if you will, are the transactions, right? Data is the transaction. Data is no longer uh, a mean or, or, or just an instrument to transfer something. The data transfer itself is the transaction. So this led me to think, um, uh, and data itself is not uh, uh, meaningful in terms of source, residence, or monetary value, because data, just a piece of data has rarely, on its own, has no monetary value. The fact that you know my name doesn't necessarily create a measurable monetary value. Um, data itself, the source is probably meaningless, because one piece of data means very little, um, but multiple pieces of data means a lot, and they probably come from all over the world. And they're probably owned by no one, like data on traffic or weather, weather pattern are not owned by anyone. So, so you propose an alternative, which is a tax on data itself. So briefly, uh, give us a description of how it works. We'll go into details in a few minutes, but give us a brief description of how it works. So actually in my paper, I do not advocate a specific design. I offer several possible designs for how to tax data. But the important thing, the, 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 the thing that uh, uh, all different proposals 
have in common is the data itself is the tax base, not data as a proxy to something else. Um, not data as a proxy to income, not data as a proxy to value. Data is, if you will, a commodity uh, or uh, a some uh, 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 that we tax. Um, and there are several ways we can do it. We can have a direct tax on data, basically just on uploads and downloads um, uh, based on uh, volume. Uh, we can tax internet infrastructure as a proxy to taxing data. Uh, we can uh, tax uh, uh, data in a way of uh, having people that collect data share the data with governments. Um, uh, we can tax uh, a bandwidth. We can um, uh, impose uh, licensing uh, that comes with the fee, of course, requirements before anyone can collect data. So all these proposals are out there. But again, the common thing is that the people that collect the data are the taxpayer and the tax base is the amount of data or some proxy to the amount of data. So to use a, a familiar analogy, a data tax would be something like an excise tax, like a gas tax or a carbon uh, tax, something like that. Is that, is um, that yeah, I'm, I, I think this it, it makes sense to think about it that way. Um, but I also think it's different than excise tax in the sense that Excess tax are really in the indirect taxes, and I'm not sure that the way that I think about data tax, data tax is really indirect taxes. I'm not sure that the incidence is so clearly going to be fall on uh, end use. I don't even know who the end users of the data is uh, are. Right? I mean, the, if we impose the tax on the collector of the data, I'm not sure. It, it's a question of design, of course, but I'm not sure that the the, the whomever collects the data can actually transfer, certainly not in full the incidents to the people from whom they collect the data. Um, so in the sense, I'm not sure this is going to be an excise tax uh, uh, in the sense that it's not going to really be indirect tax. So I think it's somewhat different than excise tax, even though the analogy helped to think about what it is that we're taxing because we're taxing volume, which, yeah, so this is an excise tax. Um, so, so, so the interesting question, I guess, as you just suggested, is, is the incidence issue. So, so where do you think this tax will fall? So it probably will be out. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, I, I wish I did. Again, a question of design. I, I think the que this is going to be somewhat similar to the way we think about corporate taxes, right? We don't know exactly where corporate taxes fall. We have ideas. We think it's mostly owners of capital, but maybe uh, uh, labor, maybe consumers. Um, and, and I think it, here it will be the same. I think if the tax is imposed on data collectors like Google, the cost for them of making business is going to increase, obviously. But Google cannot identify a cost. Uh, unless, the only way that Google can uh, get away from it completely, or at least transfer the cost completely, is to start charging for using their services, right, for, for search. Uh, which, by the way, I don't have major issue with because then they'll have to pay income tax. Mm -hmm. and, and in a sense, um, the idea of the data tax is to replace lost revenue uh, of income tax. Um, um, so so I, I think cost will be uh, dispersed uh, to different market agents or, or uh, 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 born by different market agents. It's not going to be one easy transfer of incidents to people that use Google or whatever. So, so some, some skeptics of your idea ask, why would you want to tax data? Uh, you know, and, and I guess it raised the question, do you see this as a Pugubian tax? Is it aimed at reducing demand for something that's fundamentally bad? Yeah, so I mean, the, the, the answer, uh, there are two answers here. First, I didn't start uh, um, looking at the data tax as a Pigouvian tax. I mean, this was not my initial idea. My initial idea was looking at the failure of income tax and think if the income, if the income is the correct base to tax in the current, in the current economy, um, assuming that what we care about is ability to pay and find government in administrable and efficient way. And, and I came up with this idea of data tax. And I think, so, so this is the first answer. The, 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 uh, in an economy that is, uh, very much derived from data, I think there is a good argument to be made that uh, raising revenue should be uh, uh, should focus on data rather than income because data is uh, uh, easier to measure in our economy today and also um, 
I think it will be easier to administer. It will be progressive because only large users of data will use it. Um, so there will be a reflection of, of uh, uh, ability to pay. So if you look at the basics of why we tax, I think data is a good instrument. So that's A, it has nothing to do with Pigouvian properties. As I looked at it, of course, there are Pigouvian properties uh, associated with it, because right now the way that uh, data brokers or data collectors work, they work, they collect everything, what not, whatever they can put their hand on, whether they need it or they don't need it, they don't know if they need it. And then they put it in some machine, the machine try to learn it and create something. This is the data economy that we're living in. Um, and of course, there are negative consequences associated with it. Um, uh, there are basically three categories of bad things that happen with such uh, um, uh, 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 data collection with absolutely no impediments whatsoever. A is privacy, which is I think is obvious. B, we saw, uh, we're seeing it all the time in terms of there are real societal democratic issues at stake when uh, very few actors collect so much data, can manipulate it and transmit it back to the market and affect not only consumers' behaviors, but also voting behavior. And the third is just the storage has ecological uh, environmental effects. Um, so yes, there are negative externalities. Taxing them, uh, uh, taxing data may actually help in that sense as well. I don't think it will completely eliminate it. I don't want to eliminate it, but uh, um, I mean, data collection. Uh, but I, I don't think it's necessarily bad to make it uh, a bit more expensive and have the people, the entities that collect so much data carry some uh, of the uh, societal cost associated with it. So somebody from the audience asked the, the, the obvious follow-up question. I'm concerned that it could be used to quell, the, the tax could be used to squelch free speech. Uh, I'm also concerned about it. I'm also concerned about it. I can. I, I. This is an obvious risk I cannot ignore. So I mean, when I started thinking about design, um, one of the reason I thought that this actually may be uh, easier to administer um, is that at the end of the day, uh, any data has to be transmitted through uh, um, infrastructure, or through physical internet infrastructure. And we've seen that bad governments took advantage, we were seeing it all the time, that bad governments take advantage of it to simply block the flow of data. The way I think about it is uh, um, this gives good governments ability to enforce the tax. Um, is there a risk that bad governments will use it uh, badly? Yes, of course there is a risk, but I, I don't think it's, it is different than any uh, uh, a governmental instrument that can be used uh, uh, for good or for to, to advance uh, authoritarian uh, tendencies. So I, I don't think in that sense it is, it is different. The, the, the internet is there, the infrastructure is there, bad governments can already block uh, internet traffic. So it's not like I'm introducing a new physical instruments that government never had before. I want to ask you in a few minutes about the OECD, but but yeah. specifically about a data tax. Would it have to be uniform across all countries? Would you need a consistent international system to make this work? So uh, that's uh, depending what is the view of of, of of the correct design. So actually, there is a, there are two economists from the IMF that also propose. At the, actually, at the same time that my paper came out, their paper came out. Uh, which is why we do not correspond with each other I, or, <laughs> in our papers. I mean, it's literally to, it, within the same month. Um, and they actually envision data tax. Uh, they, they get to the idea of the data tax the same way that I do um, based on the economy, but then they, their design requires a, a, a global coordination under a global internet tax authority that basically rents out bandwidth. This sounds extremely complicated to me. Um, it would be fantastic, but I don't see it happening. One of the things I, th I think that the benefits of a data tax is that it can actually be imposed uni unilaterally, relatively successfully, because uh, 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 data is kind of like um, oil or gold. It's in a place. I mean, the, at the end of the day, maybe not all data, but most data, if we, if we uh, collect data on consumer behavior in New York, which actually New York proposed uh, such, such a tax recently. I mean, you, you, it, it's easy to identify the data that is being collected. It's easy to uh, geographically ring fence it. 
and and the 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 uh, the authority within the geography can actually do it i think rather successfully uh with no need uh, uh for coordination no nor do i think there is actual need for coordination i i have to admit because i mean what would be the the double tax here uh, right i mean this is why we think about why we need international coordination to prevent double tax because i mean once the data is downloaded from New York to whatever server, this is it, right? I mean, there is no additional taxation that can happen. Um, uh, so, so I'm not sure why we would need coordination, but I mean, it's, it's not something that I dismiss. I think I need to think about it some more, but I think this is a successful, a good unilateral instrument. Look, let me at least at, from an administrative point of view. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's step back and talk about some of the other alternatives that are out there. So, so one of them uh, is, is the digital service taxes that a number of countries have tried to impose over the last few years, um, uh, maybe not so successfully, but uh, give me a sense of why a digital services tax wouldn't work. Why, why couldn't we just do that? Well, first of all, politically, it wouldn't work, right? So I, I actually think that in terms of design, and enforcement of setting aside political uh, uh, objections, dig digital service tax could uh, work to an extent. I mean, again, this is not an opinion of whether it's a good or a bad idea. It's just something that I think is relatively, relatively enforceable. My problem with digital service tax, I mean, I, I don't love them, but I don't hate them. I don't. I'm, 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 I'm kind of. Uh, um, Meh about them. I'm not for, not <laughs> against. Um, the the issue, at least the philosophical issue with digital service taxes, is that in, in my sense, they they are really a component of income, right? They're really a form of tax on consumption, if you will, uh, a component of income. And again, in and also what they measure is monetary value, right? You have to know sales in a specific country. You have to come up with source rules, and this goes back to all of the problems that I. Uh, uh, have at least from a theoretical point of view with income tax in a data-based economy. So maybe we could try them, but I don't think that they solve the fundamental problem of trying to find a tax base that does not necessitate us to uh, um, uh, um, identify the place of the term that I really hate of value creation. Okay, or at least try to find a proxy to value creation. Data is the value. This is basically what I'm saying, and I don't have to measure uh, uh, the monetary. I don't have to translate it to monetary value. This is the idea of the, of the data tax, not to try to ascribe value to it. Mm -hmm. So is, is that the same problem with, with what the OECD is trying to do? Or yes. Yeah. Yes, it's absolutely. Yeah. So, so actually, I think what the OECD, in that, I, um, uh, I applaud the OECD efforts, of course, um, but the OECD, the entire attempt of the OECD is to try to find new proxies for source, for residents, and, 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 and find some way to allocate monetary value among jurisdictions in, honestly, in a world where this does not make much sense to me. Because I don't know that conceptually speaking, you can actually find value in a specific uh, uh, jurisdiction. So uh, an, an, another way that people are trying to do this is a, is a tax on digital advertising. Uh, the state of Maryland, where I live, yeah. is, uh, has, has enacted a tax and it was just struck down Which, this week yeah. by a judge. And the judge found that it violates the, the Federal Internet Tax Freedom Act, the Commerce Clause of the Constitution, the First Amendment of the Constitution. What does that tell you about the legal hurdles of, of, yeah. of, of trying okay. to do this? So I'm going to punt here. <laughs> and I, I'll be completely honest. So the article is completely uh, is a, is a theoretical exercise, right? I'm trying to think what would be a, a first best uh, tax base in, in today's economy. Mm -hmm. Um, whether or not uh, it violates uh, um, any constitutional provision or the Internet Freedom Tax, or I honestly I did not do this analysis. Um, I I don't think I mean I'm I'm having hard time to conceptualize this. Uh, let's say the ana analysis aside, I have, I'm having hard time to conceptualize this. I, um, I, I for example I think that the New York proposal of actually collecting per capita. Right, so, so maybe I should say something about this. So the New York um, data mining tax proposal 
basically requires uh, what's it called commercial data miners. I can't remember the exact uh, phrase, but, pe but people that collect data for commercial purposes uh, uh, to pay per capita tax uh, 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 in order to be able to collect data. And the, the per capita are the people that reside uh, in, in New York. Um, I think the reason they, de they designed it like that as opposed to the Maryland tax is try to avoid uh, legal hurdles because I don't know what would be the discrimination there. Um, and I'm not sure because data is a, a commodity that is essentially being collected. So I'm not exactly sure what would be the free, uh, the first amendment implication here, right? It's, I, I, I honestly don't think I mean, I'm sure someone can come up with an argument that he does, but I, I, it's not different than actually collecting anything else that is a commodity or that can be turned into a commodity. So a couple of, of these, these kind of broader questions to kind of get a sense of, of, of where you're coming from. So one of them is the idea of taxing volume seems like kind of a crude instrument. It's not hard to imagine, for example, a large amount of data generating very little economic activity and a relatively small amount of data generating great value. But you say the taxes shouldn't even try to reflect these differences. That's yes. the lost cause. So ex explain a little more about why not. So, so I, I actually, I'm not sure that I agree with the argument that very little amount of data, at least in the, in the way that I think about it, uh, can, collect, can generate a lot of money. So yeah, insider trading is little amount of data that can generate uh, uh, a major return. So this would be an example, but this is not what I'm thinking about. What I'm thinking about uh, is about companies where data collection is their business model, right? Mm -hmm. That they're making money out of the, uh, or, or the, the creating wealth at the end of the day, out of the fact that they have huge, unbelievable, large amount of, of, uh, of data, of little pieces of data and the ability, sorry, to manipulate this data in order to identify uh, patterns and convince us to do things and affect patterns, right? Aff affect consumer behavior. Um, so in that sense, I only, I honestly only believe that, uh, uh, and I think that this is the data economy, so to speak, that we live in, only a huge amount of data in the hand of few that can actually manipulate them are the ones that generate the value. Um, a lot of value, but every little piece of data on its own, unless it is collected and aggregated into a database with millions of other pieces of data and manipulated means nothing really. It does not mean anything. So, uh, um, we, which is why I think the example of very small amount of data can generate a lot of uh, info. This would be like the abnormal return, I guess that we're trying to tax. Okay, so once in a while we will miss it, but I, I, this, is, this would be the exception not the rule, I think. Let me ask you a question through a, a slightly different lens. So it seems like one of the challenges here is dealing with the barter elements of, a, of the digital world. So in effect, I agree to share my personal information with Facebook in exchange for access to its platform so I can communicate with my friends. That surely is economic activity in some way, but no money changes hands. So how does a data tax capture that? Okay, so I, I would resist this characterization a bit of what I think about the, uh, uh, as data tax, even though this is exactly what Aviona in a recent article is saying, and few others looked at it. So um, looking at data uh, transaction as a barter, which is, is reasonable, of course, because it is a, a barter, um, uh, in my mind, kind of puts it back into the income tax realm, mm -hmm. except that we're unable to tax it because there is no value that we can point to. So, um, if this is how, if this is the reason we want to tax data, so the taxing data, it will be a proxy for that, right? We don't mm -hmm. know exactly what it, we, it's. It's impossible. It's it's not a task anyone can fulfill is to try to value the. What is the value of me searching? I don't know five times a day on Google. Or whatever but the assumption and, and this is where i resist a bit is that there must be a barter in data collection or that i'm aware of so i'm aware that i'm searching something on google mm -hmm. but i uh, uh, um, transmit data all the time without knowing it when i walk someplace with my phone on me mm -hmm. 
-hmm. someone collects my location data. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where I eat, how much I pay. It's not like I, I, I engage in transactions that I don't think about them as data transactions, right? I actually go to a restaurant and I purchase a meal. In my mind is I purchase a meal. In Google's mind, oh, this guy likes Thai. Okay, so this, so, so this is uh, 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 also, this is not a true barter. And also there is data that is not, I don't think applicable or belong to anyone like uh, um, freely available data about the weather, mm -hmm. which they also make use of. Um, because they're not going to try to convince me to buy an umbrella in the summer, but they might uh, in winter. And uh, this whole thing has value, again, when it is uh, combined together with other pieces of data uh, um, and, and affect their ability to pay. So we should capture all of that rather than just a transaction between me and Google or whomever when I actually type something and I am searching how to register to the prescription, for example. So, so an issue that always comes up when, when uh, academics design uh, tax systems is they start out as, as kind of ideal with, a, with a, you know, a, a strong tax base and it works very smoothly. There are you know, no administrative issues. Then the politicians get a hold of it. And, and the, the tax base becomes more porous. There are lots of exceptions and special deals and the rest of it. Is there a way for your proposal to avoid that or is it inevitably gonna run into some of the same problems that we see with the corporate income tax? Um, no, no tax is ever going to be pure, right? As much as we want it to be as academics. That said, I think that once we decide that we are taxing data without trying to ascribe monetary value to it, there, is, there are less line drawing problems or potential problems. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the things that I don't like very much about the uh, 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 New York mining data tax is that they are trying to define who is the commercial data, whatever. Okay, so this is a line. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would think that we can create simpler lines like the volume of data and, and set it in uh, set an exemption below a large volume that will in effect make sure that only people that really collect data for the sake of collecting data uh, uh, will be taxed. So I do think there is a way to design it uh, um, in a workable ma manner. Politicians inevitably will ruin it. I'm sure that they, they, they will. Um, but this is not a reason not to try. I mean, the, the idea is almost completely new. There, are, uh, other than myself, there are maybe four or five other scholars that offered something in this vein. And, and, and this is a very primordial stage of the discussion. Um, but at this primordial stage, uh, uh, we need to discuss the pure form uh, and to, to start from a high bar before it goes down the drain and politicians ruin it. So. Well, I think that'll be the last word. Uh, Omri Marian, thank you so much for joining us. It's a fascinating idea, and um, I think it'll get a lot of discussion over the, next, uh, over the next few years. So thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.